Right, we are now at the bow and before I want to put the um, eyebrows on the wriggles above the uh, scuttles here, uh, I've just got one or two little last jobs of uh, finishing to do, uh, particularly around the, the horse pipe area. And we've got quite a lot to do still uh, around the bow uh, with rivets and weld seams and sonar and then also a bit further back we've got the um, um, hydrophones to put in. I want to start because this is the main piece of work here I want to start around with the horse pipe I've got a little bit of sandpaper and we're just going to finish that shaping job What I'm trying to do is sort of get it nice and smooth and blend it in and make sure there's no lumps and bumps. So I'm not really pressing on, I'm just lightly doing it and then it's just going to catch anything that's sitting proud. And as you can see, I'm going in multiple directions, just to make sure it's all blended in whichever, whichever way this is going. Okay, I think we can get um, a lighter grit now and do some smoothing and tidying up. I don't really know what the grits are of any of these, so I can't, can't really say that I've got a a drawer full of little offcuts like this and if you roll them out to see what's on the back well not much bits of letters and bits of numbers and you it's sometimes it's nothing so you've got no real way so I'm just going through feel and going through that's coarse enough and that's smooth enough and doing it that way Wherever I can see any witness of the filler, the terracotta, I'm just going to go over that and just make sure it's nice and smooth. Because of course smooth to the finger and smooth to the eye can be a different thing. We're just going to keep dropping down onto smoother grits all the time. So that feels nice and smooth to the touch now. Okay, uh, hopefully when we put the primer down, we won't see it. Um, and if we do, then we'll do some more remedial work. Um, but that, I think, is smooth enough for us to now progress to the next bit. So I'm just going to clean it down. Uh, 
And then I'm going to go in with um, a polishing sponge just as a, a final tidy up. So I've got two grades um, with the white being the ultra smooth and we'll do that last. And because this is a sponge, it's going to get in and just help uh, with the shape. I'm not putting any flats on or anything. I think that's still a bit pitted, that one, so we'll come back to that in a sec. And now we can go in with the white. And you can see the shine on that now as we're polishing it up and getting it nice and smooth. Yeah, happy with that. Well, that certainly feels seamless, so I'm hoping we're good there. Let me just... Okay, right, I think we need to just put a dab of filler in that there. Um, so let's do that. So I'm gonna use perfect plastic putty for this job. And I'm just putting a dab on my finger. Pushing it in like so and just double checking all the others whilst we've got the uh, putty out it's worth a quick check now this dries super super fast so by the time I've put it away and made a cup of tea I'll be able to sun this down which is ideal and I've got a couple of gouges in the uh, plastic from removing the um, previous degaussing cable so it's worth just doing those while we're at it what I'm just trying to get at the moment is as perfect a smooth surface as I can okay that's looking good Um, I think I'm happy with that now. So what I want to do now is just remark out some of the um, weld and rivet locations um, that we put on previously when we were trying to understand the bow uh, and how everything connected with the scuttle placements. So I'm going to zoom you out and then we can have a, a look at the bigger picture. I probably need to repose the camera. So. The weld seam that I drew in here is still visible, so I can just go over that. Like so. So that's nice and visible. And then we've got one that goes in here so I want to send that away first now the furthest away from the bow is this one here which doesn't go the full length down like it's drawn now um, so let's draw that in properly so it's starting there and going down like that um, and then it terminates at the end of a row of rivets and that row of rivets is running there we can just see like that and goes underneath all of those so that's our termination point for the rivets And that's the termination point for the weld seam. And we can just 
rub that out. We know not to do anything with that. Right, so we need to clean that away as well. Um, and then I've got a weld seam after the sixth scuttle. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I can just about make out where I originally drew it. Um, and that's also going down to the, uh, well, the row of rivets that we've got to put in. So there. Okay, won't go down as far as that. Um, so that line was originally put in to mark the end of the degaussing. So then our rivets are starting here. You can still see that original line and running like so. So before we carry that on, I better sand those bits off, which it should be nice and dry now. So let's go in and do that. Let's get my uh, sanding paper. Again, I don't know what grit this is. It just feels right for the job. Circular motion, so you know you're getting it nice and even. got it sort of smoothed down we can go side to side and make sure it fits nicely in with the shape of the pull there we go So you know you've got it sort of as smooth as you can when you can't really see the, the filler anymore. If you left it like that, actually the filler's proud of the surface and that'll show over under the paint. So I don't know what that knocking noise is. That's annoying me. periodically stopping and wiping it clean. What is that knocking noise? Let me stop this. Right, solved the knocking noise. It was a stack of uh, plastic boxes that have my Lego bricks in and they were, uh, the, the cupboard was tapping against it. So I just moved them out. there so
Right, we can finish marking up now that that's done. Let's give it one more clean. Right, so. Our weld seam here, we can continue on. So we know that's our end point and it's coming there. These um, flexible rules are really helpful. There we go. So we know that's rivets. So I'll put a little R at the end of that one. And we can now do our weld line down here. We've got our termination point. Um, we've already put the weld line in there. But I might just go over it with stretch sprue, which is how I'm going to do the rest of them, having had a bit of a play. So let's just get this right. Wild line, yep. Ah, there's a wild line to go in there. Okay, so that's going back to there. I can see the original marking, so I know that's my original measurement. There we go. Um, and then we've got that in, so that's correct. Um, and then we've got that in, so that's correct. And then we've got a weld line that's running here. Um, and that's going back, let's just count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven scuttles. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And it ends just after that eleventh one. There we go. So all the lines are wild lines and left there, unless I've marked them with an R. So there's only at the bow this one row of rivets. It's not got as much as we have at the stern. Um, and while we're here, we could mess around with marking out the uh, boot line. Um, now the boot line measuring it from the top won't work because we know that the top profile is incorrect. So I'll be measuring the depth from um, the, the scuttles, uh, which is what I've done with pretty much everything because use them as the datum point. So I'm going to do some measurements and then I'll come back to you and we can mark it out. Okay, so from the first bottom of the first scuttle, we are about 19 down. which puts my top of my boot line there. Um, right, and then it's 17 from, I've counted seven scuttles along. Sorry, my hand's in the way there, isn't it? Okay, so let's just join those up. And what I'm trying to do is get an understanding of where that boot line will be in relation to everything else and does it look correct to 
how it should. Um, it, it's just a constant juggling game because so, so many things are wrong and some we've corrected and some we haven't and some we've compromised on to look right. You've got a constant game of working everything out. So that is not far off because the, the rivet line will be above the boot line. We've got a flare here where this line is. We can see a flare. It's not as pronounced as it should be. That should be flaring up a little bit more and, and departing from the boot line, but that that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, happy with that. So obviously there's no point in drawing the boot line on now because uh, that's something we'll do after priming. Um, and I, I have different approaches to, to the boot line and I'm still not sure whether I'm uh, um, doing the paint the boot line on first or paint the boot line on last. Um, I usually go with paint the boot line on first because uh, you put the, the, the black down and then you mask it off with one lot of masking tape and you can visually check that the, the, the tape is straight and looks right before you do the other painting. So that's what I generally do. But occasionally um, I do uh, the two the two colors first and then do the boot line over the top. The downside is you use um, more tape, but the upside is you've not got to be getting rid of uh, black underneath the colors you're putting down. So there's, there's pros and cons as there always is to everything, isn't there? Um, so I think we are um, marked out now. Um, we'll come back to this area where we've got some work to do and hydrophone positions. Um, now, there is no hydrophone template or anything in the MK1 set, um, but it's the same arrangement as Bismarck. So if you've got the Pontos one for Bismarck, as I have, then you can use that. But what I will do when I come to, to do it is I will... I will take a photograph of it and give you dimensions so that you can work out how to how to do your own. Okay, so I think that is everything we need to be doing for now. So let's get on with doing all of this. And I think my, my next job is adding more wriggles. Right, let's get this wriggle on. So I'm using my Zap Thin CA. I'm putting a little bit down. It's just a tiny amount um, just to help the wriggle not slip when we, uh, when we place it. And then for the sakes of you guys watching on the camera, I'm not using my placement tool, I'm using my eye. And you can see how fiddly it is if you don't use some form of placement tool. Right, I'm just going to put a little dab more thin CA on. There you go, and that'll make it a bit tacky, and then we can place. All right, happy with that, and then a little bit of thin CA on the end of my wire there, and I just tap it, and I can see that just flooding round. And that's it, that's my wriggle on. Um, so I've just got to do all of these now. So I'm going to do that off camera because, um, well, you've seen me do it. It's just uh, more of the same, to be honest. So I'll come back to you when all of these are on and we're ready to do weld lines. 
Right, my scuttles are on. Well, well the eyebrows to the scuttles, I should say. Um, so we're looking at the weld lines now, and I'm going to start with this curved one. Now, the way to sort of do this is to stitch weld it, if you like, with a little bit of glue. Do a little bit at a time. And make sure we've got it nicely placed. Like so. I'm just going to get my uh, sprue cutters and trim that big bit off the top there. Okay, we can tidy that up in a sec. A little bit more glue on the end there, make sure that's sat down properly. Okay, and then we can shape the next bit and a little bit of glue on that. Moved it. You do have time to shape it, but this is very, very thin. This stretch sprue, so have to be a little careful that we don't completely melt it. There we go, that bit went on really well. And then we can take it down to the end now. It's straightening up so it's getting easier to put down. There we go. And then get my knife and terminate it. There we go. So that's our weld seam on, which is hardly visible. Slightly thicker at the top than it is at the bottom, but that's fine. The trouble with stretch sprue is it's difficult to get it uniformly even for a long, long length. Um, right. What's actually going to be more difficult is using it to do straight lines. Um, that can be more challenging and I need lengths that are long enough. So, if I start here and see how long it is, yeah, that will that'll work. So, put some glue down just to place it. Hasn't worked. Trouble is the thin that I'm using evaporates so quickly. There we go. That 
should be a bit easier now. The noise you hear in the background is Paula getting up. That's all right, don't worry about it. Nearly done. There we go, right. And then we need to just cut that right hard up against our first weld line. There we go. Just want to make sure that's nice and straight. And that looks good. Happy with that. Right, now we've got to run one down there. Um, and that's going to ultimately meet up with rivets. So um, I'm going to use this one. We just glue the top in to start with. So I'm going to glue this um, weld line in from the top. Just get that on to start with. There we go, like that. And nip the top off. Okay, just check that's nice and straight. And then we'll put a bit more glue down and just make sure that it's gonna bond. Actually, that's made it just flick back up. Sometimes when you put the glue down, it can undo the glue you just put down, so. I'll make sure there's a bit more at the top there. And it's all pushed into place. That doesn't want to stay down, does it? There we go. And then we can just sand that level. Um, with a sanding stick. Okay, uh, we need to carry that on underneath, so I'm going to use the same weld. Uh, what am I saying? Same bit of sprue, stretch sprue. Now, in real life, the degaussing cable is going over the top of the weld seam. So we need to make sure it's perfectly aligned. And that wasn't. There we go. There's actually a slight curve in this uh, bit of plastic. So we have to straighten it after the first bit's dried. Have another go. Uh, 
Okay, that's on, but it's not right, so let's just... Got a bit of time to manipulate it. Straighten that up. Okay, happy with that. Going to let that dry. Just want to go in and scrape out down the side of that afterwards just to smarten it up. So we've got rivets going along there, but we've got more um, to put down. So I've got this longer, longer piece here. So we can start there and carry that on. So... There we go, that looks good. Happy with that. So now we can just terminate that there and scrape that away. Just caught us a wriggle. Damn, we'll have to put another one on there. Right, happy with that. So, rivet line goes up to um, another weld line. So, um, let's put that in. So, I think this is our last weld line to go in. So do that bit first. Just want to crispen the end of that. There's a little bend on the end, and I want to just cut that nice and straight. Just make it easier. There we go, that's in. Not sure how well you'll see that one because it's quite quite thin, but it should, should show up. I can feel it, so it should show up. Uh, and we've got white paint here, which means we can do some weathering, which will just highlight um, some of that weld, which will look really nice. Uh, we'll put a little bit of shadow and what have you in. So I just need to finish that weld line underneath.
Okay, and that's that done. So that's our weld lines on. Um, so next thing we need to do is just put a bit of gloss down um, so we can put our, our rivets down. Um, and I need to do a quick um, addition of uh, a wriggle. So, so far I've lost about four wriggles in the process. I think they must be Harry Potter fans because as soon as they uh, as soon as they come off they disappear so they must have invisibility cloaks. Right so let's just put that wriggle back on There we go. Right, we are good. Okay, rivets next. So we don't need much in the way of glass varnish. So rather than getting it all out of my, uh, putting some in a palette and all that and inevitably having a load of waste because I always put too much out. All I've done is wet my brush and I'm just gonna put a drop on the wet brush. And that'll be enough. Because we know exactly where we're putting it. There we go. Job done. So I've just, I've just realized I've glossed the line that we used to draw the mark for the top of the boot line, not where we're gonna put the rivets, which is a bit daft, isn't it? But anyway, I've cut the first section of rivets, um, which we need to put in there. Um, and what I wanna do is just cut, it's a double row of rivets uh, that are evenly spaced, not staggered. So I wanna just cut that little curve in. So to do that, just going to nip it off so that we have one rivet on the top and the bottom rivet is missing yeah now all of this is decal film so we have to trim this as close as we can especially as we've got to do a join because we don't want to have overlapping rivets because that will possibly show under our primer and then got to just trim it so there's as little decal film as possible. Okay, that is my row of rivets ready to go. So what I can do now is put them in the water, just dip them in, get the paper wet. It's just cold water. And then we'll put the rivets to one side and let them soak on that paper and they're not gonna float anywhere. Now I know that that goes up to there, so how much do I need of the next row? So if I hold that, where's my, if I don't miss scissors. So now I'm going up to there. So this is row two. So I'm just gonna cut the end off and 
cut as close as possible. Right, we best put some varnish down in the right place, haven't we? So let's do that. So again, I'm just going to get my brush wet. I'm using the decal water to wet my brush. And um, now we've put the decals in, they'll sit there quite happily. As long as that paper doesn't dry out, um, they'll sit there quite happily while I do this. And this dries really, really quickly. So I'm not worried about how long the decals are there. We can always re-soak them, but shouldn't need to. Uh, and why we're putting a gloss down is really just to help the adhesion of the decal paper. It's not uh, not because I'm worried about silvering. It's all getting painted over in the at the end of the day. So we'll just thin that out, make sure we've not got any drips and stuff that might show under the paint. And then I'm going to blow on it, and hopefully that'll help dry it out. Excess there, we'll just get rid of that. Right, we'll give it a minute and then we'll put these rivets on. Okay, let's get these rivets on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna push the rivets on their paper so that I've got an overhang and make sure we get the right line. There we go. And make sure we're still on line. Oh, my finger is a bit damp, so I can handle without them sticking to me. There we go. So it's actually ended up a little longer than I anticipated. So I thought we were terminating at the weld seam and actually I've gone over by a little bit. Right, let me just get my decal brush. So this is my decal brush. I've not got a softener on. I just want to use it to squeegee out any air. Decals are a little. Yeah, that looks all right. That looks all right. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to slice that with my knife and just remove those four we don't need. And we can lift them off. He says, there we go, dump them back in the water, yep, okay, so the next ones, so they've been soaking, I know that they're ready to come off, um, and then we're just, just going to dip them back in the water, it's quite warm in here because I have my mini radiator on, and you get used to the heat and then you don't switch it off, uh, and everyone comes in and complains it's like a sauna <laughs> suits me fine right exactly the same process just wet my finger again that didn't work right let's try again Move these decals up. Perfect. So I need that to stay exactly there. Right. Yeah. 
Excellent. That went as good as I could have hoped. Right. Just make sure they're nice and flat. I've got no airs or creases or anything like that. And that terminates perfectly. So that is my uh, rivets on at the bow. Perfect. So I need to do the other side and then we can have a look at dealing with this here where we've got some bits and pieces to do. But before we do that, let's have a look at hydrophones. So we don't need to worry too much about the position of the hydrophones um, just because um, in the anatomy of the ship it says approximate position which suggests no one's really sure but this line here is marking out the um, rear point of the breakwater and it's behind the breakwater and fairly low down so I've used the approximate positions because there's a 1 200 scale drawing on page 294 uh, and I've taken some measurements so I'm going to use their approximation it's going to be as good as anybody's isn't it um, and I'm going to use the Pontos hydrophone array um, and just remember uh, when you're on the other side you need to sort of reverse it so I've marked out the position for this so I've taken the measurements and then you've got a millimeter um, of material at either side to account for so that puts me pretty much there like that so I'm just gonna draw that in and to make this easier because we're going to tape it on um, to make it easier what we're going to do is we're going to uh, anneal this so we can conform it to shape so I'm going to do that off camera I'm just going to hold it over a tea light um, uh, until it changes blue and then we know it's done right got my um, template taped on and what I'm going to just do with my all is just going to go in and mark out each one of those holes what I don't want to do is drill it through the template because I could damage the template and I need to use it on the other side and actually I need to use it on my Bismarck as well and who knows I might get another German 200 scale kit at some point in the future and I might need it for that so this particular template I have plans for so I don't want to damage anything so we'll just mark it all out with the all and then go in afterwards with a drill and this will do two things it will not just mark out the pattern but it'll be um, a start point for the drill and stop it skidding about do it in a in a sensible way so that you're sort of tracking your progress and you don't miss one Now you don't need to drill all the way through the hole in this, you just need to make an impression. So what I might do is mark off my drill bit with a bit of tape, so I only go a certain depth, and I've got the same depth for all of them. There's more than you think when you come to do this to be honest what I'm finding with this jig is it's great generally but when you're doing tasks like this you need to just hold the model because it doesn't like too much pressure. Um, I'm not saying it's fragile, but it's not robust enough for you to hack things about on it. Another reason not to drill this right now is if I take this off and go, oh, actually, I don't like it. The position's wrong. I didn't get that straight. It's easier for me to just skim what we've done here with a bit of filler and then start again 
easier than filling holes and which might sink and have to have more remedial work. There we go, nearly done. Then we can have a look at how that looks. So my measurements for this are wrote down on the page in the book. So if I don't do the other side for a couple of days, it doesn't matter. Right, I think that is all of them done. So let's uh, take this off and see what it looks like. There we go. That's nice and clear, uh, looks straight to me, so happy with that. So we can drill that out now. You might be able to hear Frozen in the background, that's my granddaughter, it's a Sunday afternoon. Right, this is a 0.55 drill, um, which is the next size up from 0.5 on my uh, drill bits, and that seemed to be about the right size for the holes on the template. So. I'm going to go in, try and keep it straight to the, the flatness of the bottom of the hull. don't know how easy this is going to be on camera. Really the camera is where I want my head. So I'll perhaps do one up here, might be easier, and then I can do the others off camera. There we go. There we go. So rather than putting some tape around it to mark a depth, I'm just counting 10 twists. See what I mean about loud? Her other grandma is hard of hearing, so everyone in her house sort of shouts, so she has to shout to be heard. <laughs> right, I'm going to carry on doing this off camera and then I'll come back to you when it's done. Right, now they've been drilled out, and just use some liquid poly just to melt away the scruffy edges. So all those raised areas that are caused from the drill entering the surface will just melt away now. There we go. And then that's nice and tidy. And you can even go over and sand that now and then blow it out and it'll be fine. So that's our hydrophones done. I'm happy with that. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the bow done other than putting the hole in for the pyrovane rod uh, and putting the sonars on the front, which um, like I say, we will do when I've done the other side of the, of the bow there. Hi, and thanks for watching. You can support the channel by hitting the like button. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you don't miss any content that I put out. Model Kit Stuff is a self-funded channel and um, I don't do membership or Patreon or buy me a coffee. So if you'd like to further donate to the channel and ensure the cameras keep rolling and the content keeps coming, then you can consider making a donation uh, through my PayPal. You'll find a link to that in the text below. You enjoy your modelling and I'll see you soon.